Okay, Elena, what did you think? What were you going to say? I was going to talk about the mustaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got to talk about those mustaches. All right, let's have it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Talk about mustaches. Go, yeah. I'm distracted by you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like the way with Omni-Man that he's got that giant mustache. And it's not just, just Omni-Man with his mustache. It's when he talks about the history of his people, the, the alien race who look completely human and also appear to all be male uh, with these mustaches. And it's a ridiculous mustache, but it's a glorious mustache. It's a soup strainer. <laughs> yeah, a nose neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so is is that like a defining trait? Uh, Alana, you know better than, than we do, having read uh, further into the series. Is that like a defining trait that we go on to see more throughout the book and in other characters? or like yeah. I presume we see other characters from the... the I forget the name of the planet. Um, but we do see other characters from that planet. You said no spoilers, man. Yeah, it's we're extra scenes. More Spoiler alert! <laughs> yeah, we're going to see tons of them. And they're all going to have these terrible mustaches. <laughs> That's fantastic. I want them to all have, all have mustaches because I have this problem right now, which is that superheroes do not have glorious facial hair anymore. And I feel like that's a problem. I don't want to. I don't want to turn this into a special episode about mustaches. <laughs> <laughs> but for seriously, like uh, people like Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow, used to have this really iconic Robin Hood forked beard thing and the mustache, and you're like, yay, he's got a. He looks like Robin Hood, but now he's just some blonde dude in a green suit, and. I don't know. I feel like Superman should be able to grow a mustache. I mean, how did you know those how does he shave things? Yeah, with the mirror and various other things that yeah. have been debunked. So so let me ask let me ask this. Has uh, or do characters' appearances uh, largely reflect society at the time? Like in the seventies, do we see more m bell bottom like I mean the Dazzler Dazzler was early eighties though in Marvel, but I think. But like sort of that sort of time um, time-based stuff, like where we see characters that emulate the, like Jubilee in the 90s, like very, you know, super over-the-top caricas caricatures, caricatures of the time frame that they're from. Like, is do we do not see characters with mustaches because mustaches are out in our fashion? I'm sad. I'm, I'm afraid that's the case, but I don't want it to be. But well, it's it looks like you're trying to bring you're trying to bring mustache back, aren't you? I am, but it's mostly uniforms that change over time. It's not like a, it's not, you don't see like '70s comic books where Batman happens to have like a handlebar, like a Hulk Hogan style mustache. So clearly that that didn't catch on. But the bad guys did, right? Yeah, all the bad guys have the facial hair. How, how maybe cool. that's it, though. You know, maybe maybe facial hair is the defining trait of bad guys. Well, then I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I'm not a very good bad guy, clearly, but I'm a bad guy. And I don't even <laughs> have a chance to be a bad guy. Yeah, so, that's unfair. No <laughs> yeah, how, how does a woman, uh, to, you know, obviously we're digressing a little bit from Invincible, but how does a woman physically modify her appearance to signal I'm a bad person? Like, is it color scheme? Is it, like, a particular piece of clothing? Or is it... Too sexy. Black too sexy? Yeah, okay. Black. Uh, sure, I'll believe you for, like, black cat or... Uh, Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah, I guess so. But Black Widow is more of a, a chaotic good than anything, you know what I mean? Like, she's not yeah, a bad guy. But she's, yeah, but she's, you know, former spy, former bad guy turned good. Sure. And she's she's projecting badass. Okay, so there's a difference between bad and badass, and I'll give you that. Um, yeah, it's too, it's too bad. I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not um, prejudiced in any way. I think that women should be able to grow a, a, a bad guy goatee if they want. Is he, that's it, the bad guy goatee. It's just like the whole thing starts with that Star Trek episode. Where yes, it have... does. Mirror universe. The mirror universe in Star Trek, absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, exactly. And then you you, you have to admit if you're a good guy, how does it work? If you're if it, your your good guy has a mustache or a facial hair in the in the mirror universe, if you don't have facial hair, you're the bad guy. Like you know what I mean? It's that that have to be reversed no matter what. <clears throat> Before so, we get too far off that topic. Yeah. I'm not off that topic, but off the topic of Invincible, I want to say, speaking of mustachioed dad, I liked the way that they did his origin his origin story, so that it wasn't mm-hmm. just like a takeoff of Superman. It started off kind of like one, but then it sort of diverges into this sort of. I liked the idea that he has to go to protect the civilization of Earth rather than just to protect Earth for no good reason. He's got to like maintain civilization, which could be, in theory, a like a more political role than even a superhero role, but who knows? I don't know. You know. I, I, I'm, I'm going to spoil the crap out of this. The whole thing is a lie. Well, that's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> the cake is a lie, and so is your origin story. Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, I'm actually very excited to read a little bit more into this, so we'll have to uh, hit Comixology up or something like that, but um, sure. yeah, for sure, I think so. Um, I actually think I have some ish- some individual issues kicking around, but um, definitely not a full run. Um, so uh, okay, so I wanted to also talk about some of the convenient things that I thought were a little weird, like not weird. Excuse me, I'm going to take that word back. Uh, fun, like um, the costume shop for heroes, like where it's like, oh yeah, by day I'm like you know whatever, but by night this is totally like where superheroes just get their clothes. Like, you just come in here, and I've got, I'll hook you up, I got a thing. And then, you know, he gets his dad's suit or whatever, and it had all these these little things on it that were meant to collect solar rays, I think was the idea. And he's like, oh, yeah, sorry, those are, like, from when we thought your your, your powers were solar-based, or solar based. which is obviously, again, homage to Superman. But it's just, I thought that was cute. Just like, oh, yeah, here's your Superman, uh, your superhero comic shop, or clothing shop. That was pretty fun. I thought that that kind of, like... That reminded me, in part, of The Incredibles, which I think this story sort of has a lot of parallels with, or probably the other way around. I I think this definitely came first. But uh, the the whole idea of, like, a family with superpowers rather than just a guy with superpowers, like Kyle was saying before, you don't really see families with superpowers anymore. You don't really see families very much anymore. But that dynamic of a family with superpowers and them talking about it and them all knowing and nobody's in the dark and worrying about it. And uh, that's good. And I don't remember the other thing I was going to... Oh, the clothing thing that they also have their own special clothing designer who's got ideas, ways to make it better, except in uh, obviously in The Incredibles it's a little more uh, shticky. Yeah. So, actually, on that point of you don't see families with powers much anymore, and I might agree with you in the comic books, but actually on TV, I think that's a huge uh, uh, story that they're beating to death like a dead horse right now. It is, uh, like, they did it with heroes, which, admittedly, not everyone in the family was so nonchalant and knew everybody else had powers, but that was, like, one of the main things in the original sort of run of heroes was... Basically, everybody knew each other, and everybody had powers, and a lot of family dynamics between the brothers and the, 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 the father, daughter, uh, he didn't have powers. But anyway, and then there's that. there's been a couple of shows lately, um, the, oh, what was it called, the the Normals or the Something Sins or something like that? Um, isn't it still on TV right now? There's... I remember the one with Michael Chiklis and... Uh... Yes. Uh, that was one season. It got canceled. I was so sad. It was really good. Yeah, that was one, and there's actually another one that's even been since then. Um, uh, and I'm a, just this close to Googling it. Um, anyway, so, yeah, it's, it, I'd say there's been at least three um, TV shows, good or bad, whatever, but uh, that have done this sort of family with powers shtick on television, and it's, I'm not saying getting old, but I actually think it, it's actually relatively common now. On TV, they do it differently than in comics. Like, on TV, they use the family as, like, a source of drama rather than as a source of, like... Like, comedy is really what I'm looking for from family 
dynamics to some extent. Like, it's always more fun to see a family that's, like, poking fun at each other or just, like, being exchanging witty banter rather than always being, like, sad or upset with each other about something. And that's kind of how TV works, especially on The CW, home of the home of the superhero show masquerading as a soap opera or the other way around. <laughs> so what you're saying is you kind of wish they were to reboot Full House but with powers. That's what you're saying right now. More like Fresh Prince but with powers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. I would I would I would pay uh, I would pay money to see Fresh Prince with powers. Will Smith's already signed out. I, I heard uh, it's just in. Will Smith is attached to the project. Hancock was not Will yeah. Smith. Uh, was not Fresh Prince with powers. That was. That was Will Smith with powers. But how many characters does Will Smith do, really? That's about true. two. Okay. When I watched Hancock, I was so sad because I was like, "What? Iron Man just got popular. Now we don't get to see Demon in a Bottle because everyone will just be like, oh, why are they remaking Hancock?" Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's too bad. I was weirdly disappointed by Hancock just because I was expecting it to be something else. But that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that when I'm watching something and then it turns out to be something completely different than what I thought it was going to be. In terms of premise, if it's something else, I can maybe sure. survive it. This is a very tangenty episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's yeah. This is post credits anyway. No one, no one really watches this. If you're watching this right now, uh, you have to comment and say I'm totally watching this, so we know you watched it. Also, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, exactly. Thank you for sticking with us and and listening to our nonsensical ramblings. Tell uh, your friends how much better than the actual episode this stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is where we all get drunk. And Oh, speaking of which, we should totally, and this is just a, a commentary that I'm going to put on uh, the air, uh, we should totally do Drunk History of Comics. Like that Drunk History show they do on the History Channel? We should totally yeah. do that. Do we have to dress up in costumes? And we don't have to, but why not? <laughs> you get drunk, you're not going to care anyway. Uh, anyway, so I think that's all I have to say. Any closing thoughts from you guys? Read Invincible. It's an awesome book. Is there any lull in it? Well, like, I uh, just skip like issues sixty to seventy. It's just forget that. No. Or is it pretty good? It's good. No, you know what? I mean, it starts off slow. Which sure. Is, so skip you know. the ones that we just read. Yeah, it's <laughs> the very next story is where it gets interesting. I was when I was like, oh, for the first four issues. Oh, do they get to this and that that part? And I was like, and I was reading, and I'm like, no, they didn't. <laughs> uh, oh well. We can blame Mike for dumping a less good story in our laps and then not being part of this. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Yes, for the official record, for the official record, Mike. The absent Mike chose tonight's topic and didn't show up to talk about it. <laughs> but he had a good he had a good excuse. Uh, so, um, Kyle, any final thoughts? I think I'm tapped out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll edit. We'll end it right there. Thanks again for uh, joining us, everyone. Uh, have a good week, and we'll talk to you guys soon.